Hello, people who are not me. I am Sire Goku, and welcome back to more Mega Man. This is Mega Man 6. Uh, it's been a while since I did a Mega Man LP, and so we're finishing off the NES era of Mega Man with Mega Man 6. At least until Mega Man 9 and 10 came out, but we'll get to those eventually. Uh, with the plot of Mega Man 6, as you can probably read this real quick, we have a, a robot tournament being held by this person named Mr. X, who apparently, when the, fi when the eight finalists took place, revealed that he is the one responsible for everything that Dr. Wily has been doing up to this point. And now he's going to use the eight robots from the finals to take over the world. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty obvious who that is, but for the sake of this, I'm not going to spoil it. This is Mega Man 6. As you can see, it originally came out in 1993. At this point in time, I personally had never played, well, not not in this particular time that I'm recording, but when I first got the Mega Man Anniversary Collection in 2004, this was actually the first time I ever played Mega Man 6, because, well, when Mega Man 6 first came out, uh, we didn't have our NES anymore. Well, technically we have our NES, but we got rid of a bunch of games for it in favor of my brother getting a Sega Genesis because my mom said we had too many systems and if we were going to get a third one, we had to get rid of one that we weren't using as much, so he convinced me to get rid of the stuff for the NES to get a Sega Genesis. So, I didn't get to play this for a long time. So, with all that backstory and stuff from my childhood out of the way, this is Mega Man 6. As you can see, we've got a bunch of new Robot Masters to deal with, and as usual, I'm going in weakness order, starting with Flame Man. <laughs> really, you can go in any specific order with Mega Man 6, uh, because most of the... This is probably... While Mega Man 5 did have a lot of item drops, I personally think Mega Man 6 is even easier. Maybe they figured that... Well, I'll get to why in... later. Uh, you still got the charge shot. Uh, let me see here. Let's get rid of this net first. Uh, the gimmick for this level is there's oil, which if you're standing in it, you're going to move slower. Uh, you can slide like you did in Mega Man 3 through, f 3 through 5. You have the charge shot like Mega Man 5, 4 and 5. The difference here... Uh, let me, hold on. Uh, slide here and keep holding right so you don't fall into a pit. Uh, the difference with Mega Man 5's with Mega Man 6's charge shot compared to Mega Man 5's is I guess because they thought it was overpowered in the first two, in 4 and 5, especially 5. If you take damage while you're holding onto the charge shot, you will actually lose your charge shot. I don't know why they decided to do that for this game and this game only. Here, watch. Charge. If you take a hit, boom. Now I lost my charge shot. I don't know why they got rid of that. It really doesn't matter too much. It's just kind of an awkward thing to have, you know? <laughs> as for the as for the rest of the stage, uh, it's pretty generic, in all honesty. You have these platforms that shoot little orbs at you, but if they fall into the, the lava, if they fall into the oil here, then they make platforms. As you jump on them, depending on what direction you're facing, that's where they're going to move. So keep that in mind. Also, it's oil, so those enemies you saw earlier that dropped fire, like right there, if the fire, if the fireballs land in the oil, then it lights the oil on fire. And, oh, I forgot, if you go too far, if you don't go far enough before you knock these enemies onto the thing, they will despawn off of this, if they're off screen when they land. As for the fire, that is instant kill, it's like a spike, or a bottomless pit, so try your best not to fall onto that lava. Honestly, I think Mega Man 6, while it does have some challenging moments, it's probably the easiest of the NES games. Although I still think Mega Man 3 is... I still think Mega Man 3 is a little bit easier. 2 and 3, anyway. Although that might just be because I played Mega Man 2 and 3 to death when I was a kid. 
Heck, I played them to death when I originally got this, too, because they were... They were my favorite of the games that I had originally played. Probably for, for two reasons. Probably one, the ones I remember the most from my childhood, and two, I just remember owning them more than anything else. Speaking of owning, I am getting a lot of damage here. Thankfully, there is a... Thankfully, there's a nice little free energy, as well as an E-Tank right in the... right out in the open. Again, this is one of the reasons why I think that Mega Man 6 is a little bit easier than most of the... than most of the other games. It has some challenging moments, such as right here, just kind of have to be careful about your jump there. And because you got, you know, instant fi instant kill fire and whatnot. But really, it's not as hard as... I I'd say Mega Man 5 is a little bit harder. But anyway, we got Flame Man. Flame Man is pretty simple. He's going to jump and then he's going to shoot three fireballs and then occasionally... He will also use his flame burst attack, which makes pillars of fire appear on the ground when he's standing still. They do have a set location where they show up, so so try to uh, try to stand in the right position. And the charge shot just makes quick work of him. Sorry about lack of talking there. I was kind of focusing, but anyway. Uh, Flame Man is pretty easy. As long as you stay, a, as long as you stay a recent length away from him, you should have no problem. <laughs> you may take a few hits, but if you really have to, you got that E tank that they gave you, so use that. For beating him, we get the Flame Blast, as well as the Rush Power Adapter. This is one of the new things for Mega Man 6 compared to Mega Man 3, 4, and 5. Instead of getting the Rush Coil and Rush Jet, you get these upgrades for Rush. Rush Power Adapter turns Mega turns Rush into a armor turns Rush into armor for Mega Man, which gives him a stronger punch. I'll ex instead of a charge shot. I'll show that off in a second, but we're going to go in weakness order with Blizzard Man, and apparently Blizzard Man is in Canada. That's another thing too. Since this is a robot tournament for worldwide stuff, all the robots' stages are based off of, well, inspired by real-life locations. Think kind of like G Gundam, only with Mega Man. So, Flame Man's stage was, I guess, supposed to be inspired by India, which kind of makes sense. And Blizzard Man is based off of Canada. Uh, right here, the Rush Power Adapter, I guess I should put it back on so I can explain it. As you can see, next to, there, next to the energy bar there, you have a second half energy bar, which is the charge meter for the power adapter. The normal charge shot has slightly more range, but it's not as strong. And if you use the fully powered one, it's not as long a range as the charge shot, but, but it does more damage than the charge shot does. So, if you want to sacrifice range for power, then you got the super adapter for that. <laughs> But really, the Mega Buster pretty much does all the work for me. <laughs> if anything, I think the Mega Buster is just like in Mega Man. F well, it's not as overpowered as the Mega Buster was in Mega Man Five, but it's still pretty. It's still pretty strong. Uh, you can use the Flame Burst or the Flame Blast on those icicles there if you want to get that extra life. Personally, I've been kind of having bad luck with commentating and playing this at the same time, and I don't really want to take risky jumps right now. Uh, fun fact, this is my third attempt at doing this, because I'm trying to do this without with as, with as minimum amount of deaths as possible. Uh, if you hold left there, you can actually get to that cracked block there. And I believe it has a extra life or an energy tank if you need it, if you break it with the power adapter. 
But it's okay, I don't necessarily need it right now. We have our shield attackers, but if, and or you can just go on top here and flame blast your way to this E-Tank. Again, two E-Tanks in a row. <laughs> Again, this is one of the reasons why I think this game is a little bit easier than Mega Man 5. The only thing that's really kind of... The only thing that's easier about Mega Man 5 than this is the item drop rate. They fixed that in this game. You're not going to be getting nearly as many extra lives as you would in Mega Man 5. Uh, if you're playing the Anniversary Collection on GameCube like I am, if you use the C-Stick, you can actually switch between the power adapter and the regular form on the fly, which is pretty nice, as well as using the shoulder buttons to cycle between weapons. And we have this giant squid mini-boss, which I'm just going to murder with just regular pellets. Now, this part's probably the trickiest section of Blizzard Man's stage. And that's not saying too much. You have this rising... Uh, submarine here. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word for a second. Just remember, if you're playing the version that I am, A is shoot and B is jump. Don't screw that up now. <laughs> and that's probably the most dangerous section right there, is taking out that Sniper Joe. <laughs> While, you know, not getting hit by the spikes. Because it's, again, the way it's dipping up and down, spikes are instant kills, so just... You have to time your... You have to time things well here. <laughs> So if you come down this way, you can get an energy tank if you're fast. It's, it's not hard, just be careful. <laughs> and this part, you have to be a little bit fast. Stop, slide, stop between the spikes here, slide, there you go. It's not that hard, really. Then you have these time bombs. Boom, that's probably the hardest part of this entire stage, and that's... Not saying much at all. Let's see, I haven't, I haven't been taking very long at all, have I, huh? And for some reason, they have you go on these bombs. I guess it's supposed to be like a puzzle, but... It's kind of... it's really simple. And we got another... Squid mini-boss here, and now we're at the end of the stage. This can be a little bit tricky with the ice platforms. my suggestion is just wait for the bombs to explode and then jump down. <laughs> so we're done with the stage. As well as, so try to, you can use the flame burst. The flame burst is actually really powerful as a normal weapon. But try to save it for Blizzard Man here. Blizzard Man is, Blizzard Man's kind of easy. He's going to roll up into a ball right, like you saw right there and charge at you. That's his most damaging attack. It's also the hardest one to dodge. And then he has his blizzard attack, which just shoots little ice crystals at you, which are really simple to dodge. And then he dashes at you. So, there you go. Uh, as you noticed there, I was jumping and shooting. If you jump and shoot the flame blast, then you get a better arc, which allows you to hit guys a lot, which allows you to hit them a lot safer. <laughs> And for beating him, we get the Blizzard Attack. Which is my least favorite weapon in this game. It's very slow, and it uses up... It uses weapon energy like no other... like nothing else. It, you will spend a lot of weapon energy really fast on that. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. 15? You know what? I think I'm going to call that for now. So, thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we're going to go on to Plant Man, which is, in my opinion, the hardest stage in of the eight Robot Masters we have to deal with. I will see you guys then.